Hi everyone, my name is Liam and welcome to this video where I'm going to discuss how Carlos Alcaraz is a very tough road to becoming world number one again until maybe after Wimbledon. If you look at the live rankings right now, you're looking at Novak Djokovic sitting on top of the tennis world, being number one with 7,160 points under his belt. In second place, you have Carlos Alcaraz, who actually, you know, was world number one last year after winning the 2022 US Open. But once Novak Djokovic came back on the tour at the Australian Open this year, he won the title and he got back to world number one. Alcaraz currently sits on 6,430 points. And he can actually topple Djokovic for world number one if he wins in Wales in the next week. But you also have to remember that Carlos has to defend his Miami Masters title, which is another 1,000 points. In order for Carlos to actually become the world number one, he needs to actually win both Indian Wells and Miami coming up. He can't reach the final of one and win the, the other because the maximum points he gets in one of those situations is 7,120 points, which is only 40 points behind Novak Djokovic's ranking of world number one. But the fact is he can't reach world number one unless he wins both titles in the month of March. If you take into account who has what points to defend until the end of Roland Garros in this year, you know, Carlos Alcaraz has more than half of his ranking points reliant on these tournaments. Carlos actually has 360 points that he's defending already here at Indian Wells this year from reaching the semi-finals last year where he lost to Rafael Nadal. Then you count obviously winning the Miami Masters where he got another 1,000 points. Then you move on to Monte Carlo where he actually lost in his first match there in the second round, so he only gained 10 points there. And then he won Madrid and Barcelona back to back, so that's another 1,500 points collective and reached the quarterfinals of Roland Garros, which is another 360 points. So all in all, until the end of Roland Garros, Carlos has 3,230 ranking points to defend, which compared to what Novak Djokovic has to defend until then, is completely the opposite. Novak also lost in his first match back in Monte Carlo. You know, you can't really blame him. He hadn't had much tennis under his belt, especially after the fiasco that happened last year in Australia. He lost that in the second round to Alejandro Davidovich Vakina, so that was only 10 points added to his ranking. But then, you know, you go on to Madrid, where he actually lost to Carlos Alcaraz in the semifinals, but that's another 360 points for him. You go to Rome, where he won the actual title, 1,000 points. And then at the Roland Garros, he also reached the quarterfinals, where he lost to Rafa, and he got 360 points there as well. All in all, this only gives him a total of 1,730 points that he has to defend until the end of Roland Garros. So all in all for Carlos, it's going to be an extremely tough ask to become the world number one by the end of Roland Garros because he has so many more points to defend than Novak Djokovic has to. Novak obviously in his rankings, he's got Wimbledon and the Australian Open. He didn't even participate at the US Open last year, so he doesn't have any points to defend there. If You know, you, you would hope that he's, he's going to the US Open this year, especially you know the, the restrictions should be lifted on May 11th in the US, so you'd expect him to go to the US Open. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to be an extremely tough ask for Carlos Alcaraz to get anywhere near the world number one ranking if Novak Djokovic is both playing in all the tournaments he would like to, slash playing at his best. So let me know what you think in the comments below. But personally, I don't see Carlos getting the world number one ranking spot for more than maybe two or three weeks at a time, maybe probably towards the end of this month maximum. That would be his best opportunity to get the world number one ranking spot if he does really well in Indian Wells in Miami. But if he isn't able to maximize and get 2,000 points over the next you know, three weeks over Indian Wells in Miami, it's going to be extremely tough for him to get anywhere close to Novak Djokovic.